bushfires are once again bringing fear, destruction and death. Everything's gone. Everything. But are we ignoring the role of power lines in igniting catastrophic bushfires? Well, I thought it was something electrical, the, the twang, something breaking, and the zzz, something electrical. There's no dispute that the cause of the fire was a power line that broke. Fire in the wire. Welcome to Four Corners. Power lines have been blamed for fires that took 161 of the 173 lives lost in Victoria's Black Saturday disaster in 2009. And tonight's story reveals new information in that regard. People also forget that in the disastrous 1983 Ash Wednesday fires in South Australia and Victoria, power lines were responsible for most of the 75 deaths. So why would anyone be surprised that a power line was again blamed? for the recent Springwood fire west of Sydney that destroyed nearly 200 properties. Governments accept that the risk posed by power lines in times of high fire danger is real. But the obvious solutions come at a price. One to be measured in dollars. The other in inconvenience to the public and possible health risk. So as Australia faces another summer of serious bushfire threat, already previewed dramatically in New South Wales in mid-spring, why can't governments agree on the best way to deal with one of the biggest single fire risks? Jeff Thompson reports. Early and angry, southeastern Australia's bushfire season rages to life yet again. It's been New South Wales' turn to face the infernos. Summer's still a month away, but hundreds of houses are already reduced to ash or scorched beyond repair. Amidst the scenes of extraordinary firefighting, the inevitable questions have been kindling. Asking who or what is to blame? Is it arsonists or a warming world? Too little fuel reduction or too much recklessness? So far, the people of Winmalee and Springwood in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney have suffered the most. Did you save your house? Uh, mate, I don't know. I put a bit of water on it, did the best I could, and the neighbour's house over there and the neighbour over the other side as well, so you can only hope for the best, mate. Almost 200 homes here are now gone, with greater tragedy only averted because it was a weekday. Most residents weren't at home when the conflagration came. And this is where it all started, say rural fire service investigators. Strong winds brought down a tree and power lines alongside this Springwood Road. I heard a, a twang and a zzz, and I didn't turn around because I thought I heard something on my roof and I thought... Marilyn Stubbs heard it all before watching the fire tear through the bush opposite her home. And I looked out here and it was just all ablaze. It was well, just all on fire just out here. That quickly? Yes. How long did it take from hearing those noises to there being a fire? It would have been about well, two minutes because I didn't respond straight away. Those noises, what were they, do you think? I, 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 well, I thought it was something electrical, the, the twang, something breaking, and the zzz, something electrical. Power lines start only a small fraction of the bushfires in Australia each year, fewer than 4% of them. But because they start near where people live, on hot, dry and windy days, electricity ignited bushfires are often extremely destructive. The case is now being made that power line failures sparked the two biggest firestorms of Black Saturday in Victoria in 2009. But what if the deadliest bushfires in Australian history were actually preventable industrial accidents? 
Victoria is perhaps the most bushfire prone place on the planet. And in February 2009, the possibility of a deadly firestorm had never been so predictable. More worrying for the authorities is a forecast gale force winds. With the wind, they're saying 45 uh, kilometres an hour to 100 kilometres an hour. It's absolutely, I'm worried, and, uh, and so should the rest of the Victorian public be worried. This is really unprecedented dry weather. It's dry, hot, windy. It's not going to be good. There's simply no way of underestimating the fire threat Victoria is facing over the next 24 hours or so. It is just as bad a day as you can uh, imagine, and on top of that, the state is just tinder dry. In the stifling heatwave days leading up to Black Saturday, everyone was talking about bushfires. The heatwave of the last two weeks is going to end with a bang. And authorities are worried. Lightning started at least one fire and arson another. But electricity was only being mentioned because there was not enough to go around. Temperatures so out of the ordinary that power lines were unable to carry the demand. With a crippled train system and power blackouts, how will we cope with the dangerous weather predicted this weekend? The fact that power lines might actually start bushfires was not on the agenda at all. Our weather conditions for the state, if I said they are bloody horrible, I am underestimating them. I, I have never seen figures like this. Saturday, February the 7th came and everything unfolded as predicted. Everything the Bureau had told us was starting to happen. The wind was blowing in Western Victoria, temperatures climbing rapidly and I'm sitting there looking at by 11 o'clock 11 o'clock, we got 40s across the state, you know, 40 degrees of temperature, wind blowing a gale, and I knew we were in for it. The day was half over before new fires started. Dozens of fires are burning out of control across Victoria. The worst fears of emergency services and residents have been exceeded. Soon, as predicted, Black Saturday was worse than Ash Wednesday and deadlier. Two most destructive fires started in Kilmore East and Murrindindi. Beyond belief. Absolutely beyond belief. The Kilmore East fire all but destroyed King Lake and other towns taking 119 lives and more than 1,200 homes. The Victorian Bushfires Royal Commission confirmed what the police concluded, that the fire was caused by a downed power line owned by the electricity distributor, SP Osnet. We say that fire was entirely preventable and that had SP Osnet uh, undertaken uh, some of the most basic precautions, uh, that fire would not have started, the deaths would not have occurred and the damage to property would not have occurred. Law firm Morris Blackburn is representing 10,000 people in the biggest class action Victoria has ever seen. There's no dispute that the cause of the fire was a power line that broke recoiled and fell to the ground, uh, commencing the fire. Um, what there is a contest about is whether SP Osnet could have done anything to prevent that. We say they could have. The deadly Kilmore East fire is just one of the Black Saturday blazes now known to have been caused by power lines. It's now thought they may have started more than half of the 11 major fires on that terrible day. Several court cases have ended in out-of-court settlements, allowing power companies to, so far, avoid admitting liability. The Murrindindi Inferno started as a small grass fire before laying waste to the towns of Narbathong and Marysville 
destroying 500 homes and killing 40 people. As the community dealt with the loss, the police doggedly pursued a theory that an arsonist was to blame. The horror of that idea was felt at the very top. What do you say about anyone like that? What do you say? Don't know. Just, there's no words to describe it, other than it's mass murder. The devastated community was left without closure as the arson investigation dragged on. At the time, Lynn Gunter was Murrindindi's mayor. It's, it's really very difficult um, for people in the community when these sorts of things happen um, and it not to be clear about what caused something and, and sometimes jumping to conclusions isn't the best way. Yeah. No, come on. For 28 months, the police investigated Murrindindi's then Country Fire Authority captain, Ron Philpot. Oh, I went to hell and back for two and a half years or more. Ron Philpot lives just down the road from the Murrindindi mill and electricity substation near where the fire started. He was the first to call it in. It takes you a hell of a long time to get back up on your feet when you're down and out, especially when you've done nothing wrong. Ron Philpot says that when he first saw the fire, two SP Osnet employees were already watching it. Do you know what they were doing there? Do you know what they did that time? No, I wouldn't have a clue. Don't know. I don't know how long they'd been there or, so, or what they were doing, whether they were checking it out or... It's something you'd have to, have to ask SP, wasn't it? 